happened in 1996 in a small city in Hong Kong. This story was also a famous strange case at that time. Mr. Ma was a security guard at an old apartment building. Evenings were always his best time. Because it was summer, the day was very hot and muggy, but the night was cooler and more pleasant. There was nothing better than sitting in the wind and drinking a glass of wine. After placing the pot of fragrant lamb stew on the table, Mr. Ma was very happy and refreshed, so he poured a glass of wine and was ready to sip. But suddenly something fell from above very quickly and directly into his mutton pot. The broth and even the lamb were splattered all over the table, which greatly annoyed Mr. Ma. He didn't know who could be so careless, blatantly throwing trash down, so he looked up and started cursing. But there was absolutely no movement above. Everything was still quiet. No one answered him. He thought they must be afraid of being scolded by Mr. Ma, so they deliberately ignored him. But just a few minutes later, from the fourth floor, something suddenly fell again, which was black and slightly round. Thinking that the other person would continue to throw trash on the ground, Mr. Ma was very attentive to what was falling to catch the other guy. However, the thing that fell was something he couldn't believe. Because it was a human head. It flew from above very quickly. This thing made him panic. He had never encountered a situation like this before. The head fell straight onto the table, hitting Mr. Ma's pot of lamb sending everything flying everywhere. He was also surprised to the point of immobilization. At this point, Mr. Ma could only watch the mess in front of him, his eyes white with fear. The head belonged to a woman. Because of blood loss, her skin had turned pale. Next to the head was a human hand, so it was clear that what had fallen before was a human hand. At this point, Mr. Ma wanted to run away, but his legs were numb. So, he backed up and fell back and still staring at the head on the table. In the end, Mr. Ma gathered all his strength to scream out loud to everyone for help. After Mr. Ma's screams, everyone gathered and called the police. The police car was present at the scene where the head fell within minutes. Hearing Mr. Ma's statement, the police began to surround the room to prepare to arrest the perpetrator. But when standing in front of the room, the policeman suddenly saw something very strange. That's the door to the room that didn't close. It's still open. Could the killer have run away? If not, he probably didn't know what fear was. However, the policemen were also very cautious. They stood by the door and peered inside the room through the half-open door. But what was inside made them suddenly startle. The strong smell of blood gushing out from inside the dark room with only a little light. A man was sitting on the sofa with a gloomy expression. Surrounded by blood, stretching from the wall to his clothes, to the floor. On the floor was a large knife. The type used to cut meat was also lying in a pool of blood. It seemed that this was the weapon that the man used to kill people. The policeman stood in front of him, even pointed a gun at his head to control him, but he still did not resist or explain anything. His eyes were empty and lifeless, his face dark and extremely sad. It was worth mentioning that he kept staring at the TV without blinking. Something was attracting him more than the fact that he had just killed someone. The strangest thing was that there were no programs on TV. So what was he looking at? And what made him like that? The TV continued to make squeaks and the screen was only filled with black and white dots as if the signal was lost. The police then went looking for clues around the house. They discovered the body of a woman without a head sitting in the kitchen. 
This must be the body of the head that had fallen on Mr. Ma's table. Inside the bedroom was the body of a boy, about 10 years old, whose head was also beheaded. But his head was left not far away, not thrown out. Because this case shocked the people and the press, the police couldn't take it lightly. They immediately set up a team to investigate everything. The man was also taken to the police station to get a bow. His face remained the same, still wide open eyes and gloomy. After interrogation, what the police received was only a statement that the devil had made him. He did not know what he had just done. But of course, the police did not believe it. The police wanted him to tell everything because there was no such thing as being manipulated by the devil, like he said. He also began to recount everything that night. He had no reason to kill his wife and son. It was a day off for the couple, so they both took their son out to play. Then the whole family returned home just after dark. Arriving at home, everyone was tired. The wife decided to go to the kitchen to cut some fruit and bring it to the living room so that the whole family could watch TV while resting. The son went straight to the bedroom to play and he just sat in the living room watching TV, waiting for his wife. On TV was showing a program excavating ancient tombs was also a popular program recently. But for a while the TV suddenly blurred and the sound also started to crack. It seemed that the signal was lost. After that, the image of the other program also disappeared completely, replaced by black and white dots and churl squeaks. But in that squeak, it seemed to be a whispering voice, telling the man to kill his family and cut off their heads. And for some reason, his mind went blank. And then his body began to do what the voice commanded. Just like that, he killed his family exactly the way the voice on the television said. He did not understand why he did it, but at that time he was no longer aware of anything. Hearing this, of course, the policeman would not believe it. There was no way that a strange voice coming from the TV could command someone to kill people like that. Perhaps he had a long quarrel with his wife or he was an abuser. The investigation lasted nearly a month, but no matter what method the police used, he only gave one way the same answer. No matter how menacing or soft-spoken the man was still the same, and he seemed to be very sure of his words. The police also reached out to neighbors and people who knew him to investigate, but according to the results, he had no reason to kill his family. Their whole family lived together very happily. Everyone knew it. But among the neighbors' testimonies, many said strange things had happened recently since some people had unearthed an ancient tomb near this area. The people believed that perhaps it has accidentally released something bad or a curse of some kind. Of course, the police wouldn't take out those stories to write about the case because the husband himself admitted to killing his family so he couldn't defend him for such spiritual reasons. Finally, he was sentenced to death for his cruel behavior. And whether the truth was what he told or not, no one would ever know.